Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and today I have just some fun stuff to show you from the US Mint, but the old school stuff. I always like old packaging and things like that. Um, we like to have a look at some of the old envelopes, and uh, I have something really special to show you here in a second an old US Mint set, which is kind of a fun, fun item. Uh, first of all, this uh, Treasury Department letter. Uh, oftentimes we get old materials, but very rarely do you get something that's actually dated 1955. Dear sir or madam, we've shipped to you today your set of U.S. proof coins by parcel post insured uh, in fulfillment of your order. Uh, part of this is blanked out here. I'm just trying to read that part in such something do not reach you within a reasonable time please advise to such effect on the bottom of this letter which will greatly facilitate handling thank you very much cordially mrs ray v beaster superintendent and this looks like it is printed not signed no actually i think this is signed not printed looking at the uh the ink flow on that. I think that's actually a signed piece. So that's cool because I, I don't really usually see those included of, is actually a the US postal money order for two dollars and ten cents which is cool dated June 11th 1955 from Louisville in case you didn't know. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe these are printed. Look at that. This looks identical. Here we go. This is Treasury Department, sir or madam. This one had the order number on it, was dated. We thank you for your order, acknowledgments. Let me see here. You'll be interested to know that the year 1954 broke the mint's record of U.S. coins ordered and uh, production, passing the previous high record of 1953 by more than 105,000 sets. All orders are processed and shipped in sequence of receipt date. You will be advised. Oh, see what happens when I switch from reading it on my screen to trying to read it not on my screen. Uh, all orders are processed and shipped in sequence of receipt date. We will advise you by letter the date your shipment is made. Uh, we know you will be pleased with them because of the special skills that are necessary in their making and the small staff equipped to do this work. Production cannot be speedy, but it will be steady. Orders for the 1955 U.S. proof set will be received until November 30th, 1955, not after that date. Change of address should be promptly reported to us. So to ensure the forwarding of coins to the correct address with appreciation. So this is really a fascinating letter because, you know, this sounds a whole lot like 2023 where everything was showing up late. And, uh, you know, they seem to be making a reference to the fact that you're not going to have uh, your set in a timely fashion because it takes a long time to produce mint sets or proof sets, which I find to be a fascinating assertion. Uh, <laughs> I mean, quite fascinating. Because I don't think it takes that long to make proof sets. So let's look at some of this stuff from the Red Book. This 1955 proof set, 53 and 52. Intriguing because uh, this letter says that the 54 broke the mint's record in U.S. proof set orders and production, passing the previous high record by more than 105,000 sets. So did 52... 53, it looks like they only made uh, 47,000 more sets, not 105,000. But the 54 over the 53, yeah, they made over 105,000. So, okay, 54 over 53. I don't know why I was doing 53 over 52. Man. And then in 55, the interesting thing is they had a box pack and the flat pack. And this is a part of probably what she's getting at in her letter that, well, you know, it takes a long time to produce them because they had to each put each piece into a cellophane uh, envelope, staple them all together and put them in this little two by two box. So this is the actual set here, 1955. And, you know, so this is the flat pack set. 
And uh, this guy's got uh, a major spot here on the Ben Franklin. So typically this, you see a couple little holes in the plastic and that's where the spot is originating from that oxygenation against the uh, coin that's also seeping through with whatever carbon is in the in the uh, paper envelope. The nice part is that the scent looks like it's a nice red scent still. Really on proof coins uh, from this era I'd say that the big the big thing that's hard to get is a nice looking scent. I think most of the silver coins come pretty nice. The scent and nickel can both be a little bit harder to get nice. But uh, I'm intrigued by this entire pack so uh, I can't think of a time when I've had a set with these two different letters that the Mint sent out in a, to tell them about their order and their order and their order. Plus they got their uh, the postal money order here. $2.10, folks. Let, actually, by the way, fun fact. Here, oh, this is the Mint set page, not the proof set page. Here we go. Uh, 1955, $2.10. Way to go, Red Book. You are my favorite, Red Book. And I have a 1956 proof set here also, which came in the same type of packaging. The flat, what's referred to as the flat pack. And once again, you're going to have uh, coins that should be a pretty bright silver, but sometimes you'll see toning to them if there's holes in the plastic. Well, I mean, it took all those hardworking mint professionals to go ahead and put these coins together in a way that took a long time to produce. Actually, I shouldn't knock it um, because the production process was different than currently. You know, not everything was automated. They had to take all of these coins and go ahead and vacuum seal them. And so I'm pretty sure that the placement of these was by hand. So you can imagine that would take some time. Also, there are mint errors out there where they have uh, other things inside of the plastic that was sealed together. Here you see on this quarter, again, we've got the, uh, another spot where just a little bit of a hole in the plastic has caused quite a bit of toning. And now for something completely different. Not completely different, but a little bit different. This set here, so this is not an original envelope. It's just an envelope that says 1957 U.S. Mint Set. Uh, the mint sets are fun, uh, partially because these are 57s, I think they all came with this pink outer paper, which is kind of cool. And let's look at these here. So the first year of those was 47 with only uh, 5,000 minted. The 57 sets, they made uh, 34,000 of them. The cost was $4.40. The face value was $3.64. They value, the Red Book values them at about $360 or so. Um, they do trade at, uh, it looks like $250 to $350. $200, actually I've seen some of them sell on eBay for $200 uh, that are really nice sets. And one of the things to pay attention to here is what you'll get is uh, just the original type of toning. As always, when you can get packaging like this, it really helps you understand what the toning looks like, can and should look like within um, a, a natural setting versus color that is unnatural. And we're gonna see if we can do a whole lot of things here, including counting, doing some math. That'll be the hard part. 1957, half dollar, nice gentle tone to this guy. And so the sets here should have two of each coin. I don't know if there's any sub varieties in 57. Scratching my head here thinking about it. But these guys have, a lot of them have that very purple hue. Now some of the things that happen with toning is, uh, you know, you can have toning, but you still want to have brightness. And what's nice about these coins in particular is that they have the toning and they still have brightness to them. Um, darker toning generally is not as popular or toning that covers over the brightness of the coin. If for some reason the coin looks dull then that's going to be problematic. So we've got Philadelphia Mint coins. Here we go. Really some nice toning on this one on both sides. And 
And so you had two of them because you had the Philadelphia coins twice to show the obverse and the reverse of each coin. But uh, very lovely. And so this set, they only had the Philadelphia and Denver Mint coins uh, because that's what was made that year. All right, my other pack here. Let's grab this guy. Take a look at how the Denver coins are. Also, it helps you to look at this stuff and start to realize um, some of the differences in strike and luster. What's nice about having originality and original holders, a, it gives you that sense of uh, what I like to call primacy, which is just knowing how the coins were originally produced, how they originally looked, and just kind of what your starting point was for the coin. Because it's really hard to know sometimes on other coins what their uh, certain coins, what they are supposed to look like if you don't know what an original coin is supposed to look like. Denver Mint, so you got your D-Mint mark on above the Liberty Bell on the Franklin Half Dollar. On the uh, quarter, it's right about 6 o'clock there. Below the uh, wreath, above the ER and the word quarter. And then, of course, on your penny, it is below the date. Very popular looking coin there. Look at that. So I'm not going to lie, copper copper collectors for tone is really something we don't talk a lot about. You know, people talk about Morgans and toning. Uh, copper tone collectors are really fanatical. And so this is a real nice blend here where you actually have some of the magenta, but you also have a little bit of green and blue. That's a nice look. On your... Uh, dime, you've got the uh, demon mark is just to the left of the torch. And the nickel, for some reason the nickels are both facing the same way here. Actually, that seems to be kind of the case on some of these here. Um, on the nickel, the mint mark is to the right of Monticello. But all in all, a lovely set. And it is the type of thing, like I said, that you'll see him trading. I see him trading on eBay pretty frequently for 200 to 300 dollars sometimes even less um, i can't always speak to the quality of the coins that you'll see on ebay um, you know the photos probably aren't always that good but i will say that um, for a product with a mintage as low as it as it is and i just think about how few of these probably have the original paper with them still they seem like a pretty good deal to me i mean for you know 300 bucks you're getting um, quite a few coins uh, what is this? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20 coins. And uh, I said we would do math. So these are the same amount of coins in each set. Let me just double check and see these are produced the same way here. Yep, yep, and yep. So you've got, uh, let's see, that would be a, a dollar, 50, 60, 70, 82. A dollar 82 times 2 equals math. So there you go, guys. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.